Uh, first of all, disclaimers, I, I, I haven't seen the slides. Uh, Ilya prepared them. So <laughs> In the last 30 minutes. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah the, the idea was, uh, so basically, Cinder approached us, and he wanted us to, to talk about, like, Mobex and, and Redux, because uh, he's, he's seen, you know, and, and probably you, you all uh, kind of heard the, you know, like, which one should I choose, you know, and so on. So we decided uh, to give it a different approach, and instead of just saying, you know, like, having one defending each other and so on. We decided maybe to start talking about state management, um, you know, like talking about like React and why, why these solutions exist in the first place, and then trying to, you know, like uh, explain each one of the solutions, and then maybe we can do a little bit more interactive, and if you have any questions, we can also, um, you know, like answer some of, the, some of the questions. Maybe we can start with like, just like classic, please raise your hand, who is using React here? Okay, oh, perfect, that's, uh, perfect. A, a, a repeat audience, then. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, and then just a classic one: who is using Redux and Mobix? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can see double agents here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so great. Then I think uh, you can start. With, okay, uh, I can with start this. with the, As you can see, it's a perfect slide here uh, because yeah, when we used to talk about state management in general, uh, you trying to think like what state is. So obviously it's like a perfect uh, example. Here is you can say a component. And when we were preparing with Power this talk, we were thinking, okay, React is kind of forcing everyone to think in a functional way, and everyone is thinking, hey, React is like popularizing functional ideas here, and then Power told me, no, it's OP, like fully, fully, fully. Can you elaborate on that, why it's OP from your perspective? Yeah, we, we actually had this, this conversation before. So, I mean, it can be both. But uh, like out of the box, basically React, what, uh, what it uh, promotes is to have the state close to your functionality. So React already comes with stat uh, state management. So um, just to start answering some of the questions, you don't really need uh, Redux or Mobex to start with because uh, uh, React already comes with a set state. Okay? And uh, what they do, it's uh, basically it's a very basic principle that comes from Smalltalk. It was when people was trying to figure out how to build programs, uh, like someone very clever, I don't know the name, uh, decided that it would be convenient if the state would be close to the functionality, and then you could encapsulate functionality with, with state. And React works exactly the same. So uh, a lot of people say it's, uh, React is very functional. It can be, and we will see this when we talk about Redux. Uh, but out of the box, it also has a, a very object-oriented interface which means that every component encapsulates functionality and encapsulates the state. Uh, I don't know if that's, that's more or less clear. <laughs> exactly. I don't remember. I, I can switch, yeah. Yeah, so. You, you can explain. Yeah, and uh, if you have this interface that allows you like to mutate, the only way to mutate internal state in any React component, as you may know, is just like only to pass props to this component. Because there is no way that any other component, even like the uh, parent or child or any function, if you like outside of the component, obviously if you don't do any extra hacks or like strange things that you should not do, uh, like there is no way f f to mutate the state of this component. The only way you can do that is like, hey, you are getting new props. And depends on these props, you are going like to do something with your state. That's the only way to to, to talk to component like that. And that's cool because you have a black box. Like you're passing props as a data to your component, and then something happens happens internally, and state is updated. Um, yeah, that's why it's kind of fully object oriented here. No way to do to go and directly mutate state of any other entity here, which is cool. But the problem starts. Um, it's like no, it's not a problem. It's obviously like classic thing when you have like two components and well, when you have two components and you want to sync states between them. So imagine you have like um, there will, there is a good example inside the React documentation itself. So you have like two inputs and one of these inputs it's like the uh, temperature calculator. So you have like one input that is you can input data there in Fahrenheit, and the second input when you can input data in Celsius, and they are in sync. So if you input into one, the second one is updated, and vice versa. So you have like two components, and you need somehow like to sync them, data between them. So if you don't have 
uh, direct way to mutate state. The only thing that you can do is to lift state. Oh my God. Yay, <laughs> animations. So, done, done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you need to move this state up to your parent, like to the parent of the component, and then this parent is going like to tell your ch uh, children, hey, um, it's going to handle the state itself because no need to all these components to have state. And then it's the, going to pass the data as a props to the children. Uh, it's a classic example and I think it's, there is a good description inside the React docs itself. But when you start to build it, like not even complex uh, React applications, but just like <laughs> with more than two components, this problem arises and you start like to think where I should move my state. So, and normally state bubbles up until you have it uh, in your root component. Yeah, but the problem here, as you can see, Power already tired to press in space to move uh, components around, and that is you have more and more and more components around inside your application, and you need sometimes to move, move, to move the states up and up and up. Why it's painful, Paul? Um, sorry again, can you ask again? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a huge tree of components, yeah. as any application normally has, uh, and if you are lifting state up and up and up, yeah. why it's painful? Well, I mean, uh, you're accumulating kind of the state management, you know, with, uh, with the shape of your, of your components. So basically, um, you know, like suddenly you want to duplicate a component or you want to move something around and you end up updating all the tree up to there. So in the end you realize that you, you just want to make a little change here and you end up making uh, a change up to the, to the route, yeah, to the root. And that's, that's not what you want. You actually want truly encapsulation. And you know, then you start violating these this kind of concepts that were good, that you wanted uh, data and everything be encapsulated. And it's one of the good things that React has is that basically the component represents itself uh, kind of a unity and it feels really good in React when you can only update that component and, and everything works and, and you only have to uh, compose, uh, you know, like the components and everything works. So uh, that, that can be problematic. I mean. So yeah, isolation is awesome. Uh, and the second thing is also why it's like problematic, just like from any lazy developer perspective, that you need to keep all the props that you want to pass up to the like this, this, this leaf by the end of the, of the tree. You need to pass, starting to pass them like on top of your application and it's just like painful. You don't want to have any company that passing like 50, 60, 100 props because I imagine like it's going to be like a hell. And the second like problems that go in out of that is like any update to your state or, like totally reconciles the whole, the, your whole application, which is kind of performance problem here. Uh, even if React is so cool and it's like it sells virtual DOM and all that stuff, virtual DOM is not normally a problem. Uh, problem when you have like your own single thread in the browser totally blocked by reconciliation and just like checking hey, is this component updated or not. Or maybe that, or maybe this. And happening every time you're doing like any small interaction with your application could be problematic. <laughs> I, I forgot that one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, then we can introduce the state container. So we have like states somewhere, like defined somewhere later. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the components like reading from the state directly the data that they want. And just that. So it's awesome because you can mutate and move components around the tree without any problems. And performance, you don't have also any problems with that because you're rendering only what you need. Yeah, so when we talk about MobX and Redux, we will talk uh, basically about this pattern, although we'll see that MobX actually kind of can uh, be a, a supplement to set state. Uh, but we're basically gonna talk about like having a global state. So basically, you suddenly, you don't have this encapsulation anymore, and you start to have states separated from, from your components, and each one of them will have a way to interact with that state that it's quite radically different. So what is uh, interesting for us is how our containers, uh, our components, so basically our tree of components, they subscribe to this state and they are able to re-render and they're able to communicate with the state to uh, make changes and so on. But both uh, Movex and, and Redux, they are based on the same, on the same, uh, on the same problem, which is 
I want some state that is shared among many components, and I don't we I don't want all the time to be passing props. I don't want every time to be reconciliating the reconciliating the whole tree. You know, I want if there is a state used here and here and it changes, I only want these components to be updated. You know, so how do I subscribe cleverly instead of just reconciliating the whole tree and so on? So I think we could start. Ta -dum, ta -dum. <laughs> I think, yeah, fine. <laughs> because, yeah, like, uh, let's talk. Oh my god, like, it's pretty good for not having seen the <laughs> slides, I have to say. <laughs> so, yeah, because we, I think we finished with theory. Maybe you have any questions, by the way? No questions, moving forward. Uh, so, like, as you can see, the today's fight is going to be about, like, three players. The set state inside the React native one. Then we're going to have about, talk about Mobix and Redux. So. Obviously, if you ask yourself why I, should I choose something like over the other thing, it's like I hope we're going to answer all the questions today. And the first one that we need to start is location. Um, should you talk about location, the state, state location? Okay. Um, yeah, I can do that. So basically, as, as we talked initially, uh, state can be either locally on the components or it can be externally in the components. So set state, as we said already, uh, it's completely local. Every component has its, its state and only cares about their own state. Uh, in the terms of Mobex, I also hinted it before, you can use it inside your components, uh, similar uh, how Vue works as well. So you could have uh, observable data uh, inside your component, uh, but you can also have it uh, outside. So it basically, I don't know if we should introduce before doing this maybe a little bit some of the concepts behind each one. Mm, should we? Let, let's talk about location and then we could. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm forcing the rules. <laughs> right, okay. So basically Mobex, you can use it both. Uh, there's people that use it as a replacement for, for set state and there's people that use it uh, as, a, as a global, as a global uh, store uh, like Redux. So it can be used uh, for both. You can actually do both at the same time. Uh, it's, it's useful for both. And Redux, it's basically you know, a singleton, it's a store, it's a, it's a whole tree, it's a global that everybody has access to. So this is the, the main difference on where the data is located in the three, in the three uh, um, frameworks. Cool question then. Uh, as Mobix, like is this cool thing that could be used like a component or a global one, but is there like a main uh, way of using it? So are people like 50-50 using it or like 90-10? Yeah, so that's, that's one of the main differences between Redux and Mobix. So Redux forces you, uh, it forces a, a, a way of using it. So when you use Redux, you can only use it one way. So you have the tree, you have your reducers, you have your action creators, you have, you know, like the, the framework is out there and you have to use it that way. Uh, in, in Mobex, you can actually build your own, which some people find uh, interesting. Some people say it's too, uh, it gives you too much freedom, but basically it doesn't force you to shape uh, your state in any way. So you can have, as I said, some state on the, on the component, some state outside. You can have the state looking as a graph, for instance, while Redux forces you the state to look as a tree. We're gonna talk about this uh, later on. So b basically it's, uh, it's a bit more for cowboys, I would say. <laughs> So theoretically, we're seeing here the same discussion as we sometimes, like a long time ago, heard about like Ember versus React. That in Ember, you have everything out of the box, and with React, you need to play your own Lego set. Um, I have to say, with Redux, you also have to play your own Lego. <laughs> so you, you start like, should I use Redux, uh, like Redux tank or Sagas, or should I use this middleware or the other? Uh, I think. And, and I, I don't think we, we talk about complexity. I think both, uh, both Mobex and Redux are quite complex to master. Uh, I would say Mobex is easy to get started with. You know, like you can get your, uh, your first uh, store and your first reactions pretty quickly. But it's actually, you know, like when you want to understand what's going on and you want to master it, it can be also challenging. Uh, you know, so I, I would say both Mobex and Redux are, are a bit challenging and play your own Lego and whatever, so. Touche. <laughs> So the next thing is like we want to talk about is synchronicity. It's like the way how state uh, updated and how like then react thing re reacts. Oh my gosh, to this state. So the first thing is like I think. Oh, let's vote. Is set state asynchronous or synchronous in React? 
awesome like, yeah because it was like kind of, I think it's one of the trickiest things sometimes that people are like seeing that in React let's say it in reality is async so you cannot guarantee that the next time like the next line you are calling after set state is that state is going to be what you called before and sometimes it could lead to tricky bugs uh, because the third parameter to set state is like the callback that you can call after set is finally there uh, just like I think in, but in Mobix and Redux, it's not the case because they decided, okay, let's make it simple for people to understand because we kind of not really good with the uh, nature of anything. Uh, that's why we should make um, all updates synchronous. Yeah, and this is, by the way, this is a, this is a famous uh, article from Mobix author which basically claims that set state is not uh, that obvious, and he mentioned several bugs he found using set state because of the async nature of it. Uh, so this is why actually some people uh, don't use set state and they use Mobix instead, because they want their state to be synchronous and they want to have this predictability uh, when they are mutating the, their in state. The next thing is subscription. Uh, so for set state, I think it's kind of obvious that it's going to be implicit, uh, that any component there is listens to his own state and automatically updates, so you don't need to do anything except, so every time you call in this dot state, you're expecting there to be, to have to be some data there. For Mobix, it's the same story. Yeah, so Mo Mobix, and, uh, and this is actually, I think that's the core, uh, if we want to define Mobix, I think that this is the, the best way to do it. So basically, the, the concept of Mobix is very, very easy to understand. Uh, I find sometimes people don't understand it that well. But it's basically, um, Mobix uh, provides some data structures that are observable. So you have arrays, you have hashes, you have uh, primitives, whatever. So they basically look like normal objects, but they have the, the observable capabilities. Whenever um, you, you integrate Mobix with, uh, with uh, React, it wraps your render, uh, your render method with uh, an auto run, which is a concept of Mobix, but you, you don't even see this. But basically, uh, whenever you access one of these observable data on your render, it kind of hooks into it. So let's say, imagine it renders uh, one user, it only uses the name. So then it says, okay, I use the name of this observable user, so I'm, I'm hooking into it. If anything else changes from the user, I'm not gonna re-render. But if uh, the name changes, I'm gonna re-render. So basically, the, the principle is that uh, whatever you use to, to render, it's gonna hook into it, and whenever this data changes, it's gonna re-render. Uh, so it's very ba basic uh, principle, but I think it's a very clever one, because it allows you not to have to subscribe to data. You basically render your stuff, and Mobex automatically is gonna set up the hooks uh, necessary to, uh, to re-render. Another example, uh, and that's a very powerful one, let's say in your render you have a, a big if else, so if this, and there's a big uh, chunk of code, else, there's a big chunk of code. Uh, let's say on the first pass, the, the if, it's uh, matching an observable, let's say the user is admin, and admin is an observable, it will render the first thing, uh, and then it's gonna hook into that, into that, uh, into that if. Then, then uh, if you change admin to false, it's gonna re-render again, and it's gonna go to the, to the second part of the, of the if-else. So this is why uh, we, we say it's, it's uh, implicit, because it works like set state. You don't actually tell the component, listen to the set state changes, it, uh, like uh, React does automatically. With Mobix, it's the same. That being said, some people uh, don't really sometimes know what is my component subscribing to? Uh, is it rendering too much? Is it, uh, is it gonna be, you know, like, sometimes people feel that they don't have the control with, uh, I think, any implicit uh, API always, the, the people feel, I would like more control. Uh, but on the same time, uh, out of the box, it gives pretty good performance and it's, uh, it's, it works pretty, pretty well, in my opinion. So you, you know now which, which one I'm defending, so. <laughs> And for Redux, it's explicit because, uh, like, to connect any React component to Redux, you just need to use uh, Connect helper from React Redux. It's not from Redux itself. And where you're passing, like, it's normally you, you, everyone is using map state to props. It's like this famous function that tells, okay, you have like a whole tree there, like the whole states like stored somewhere, like it's not really important where, and then like calling this function, you are going to like mm, 
transform this state into the props that this component is going to get. So from like interface perspective, it's ultra easy because like from like if we let's imagine that we are all our React components, uh, and even if we are connected to Redux store, we are getting just like props as a data. We are not talking about state, about some like magical things out, out there, unicorns or anything else. We're just like listening to props, and that's the only our way to get the data itself. Well, then we can move it like to our local state or anything like this, but we don't really think about the global state at all. Only props. Uh, this is cool because like I really find it kind of uh, clever separation of concerns uh, when you have like your own presentational components with, which I expect only props and then you have like your selectors, this function that kind of changes this global store into the props itself. But sometimes it's also, also tricky uh, when I saw people thinking that, okay, like I have this huge store and then I'm listening only to username or something like that. And I expect that React is not going to render, stuff is not going to be changed, and just like, okay, my Redux component, React Redux component is listening only to the username, which uh, in reality is not true. Uh, so map state to props is an interesting function, which is called every time, like every, every, every time uh, when your store is updated. Like even, for example, you have like, imagine the application which includes chats and tasks. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say which application it is, yes, suspicious. Yeah, but like theoretically these are totally like two separate worlds. You have like chat and tasks and they are not connected. But if imagining that all this data is living into in one store, like Redux store, uh, every time you're receiving a new chat notification or chat message, uh, all your tasks listeners that listens to the Redux store is going to be updated also. Not like really updated because React is doing reconciliation and all that stuff, but they are going to be notified that hey, there are some new, there is some new data. Like, do you want to check it? Uh, so Redux is trying to do like kind of really complex performance optimizations under the hood because this Connect helper is, looks like really simple, but in reality, it's doing a lot of stuff um, there. Um, but sometimes it fails, and it's really good if you try to understand what's going, how it's working under the hood, because performance optimizations with, with Redux could be really dramatic. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the point. So I, I, I think overall, like, um, and I think here, this is, uh, probably this is the main uh, difference between both uh, approaches, and there's obviously people that like uh, one or the other for different reasons. Uh, one way that I, I like to summarize it is that with uh, with Redux, you can finally uh, approach the functional side of React, which means that you clearly separate your state and you clearly separate your presentation. You can have your components being functions that don't have any kind of state, and they're just functions that map state into views. You know, which uh, that was uh, the initial proposal of, of React. You know, like that your that your actually UI it's it's a formula of, uh, of your state. So that's, that's really great, and that's something that you cannot do with Mobix. So in terms of testability, it's very, it's very cool, because as uh, Ilya said, everything are props, and you know, like your, your components can be pure, and that means you don't have to take uh, care of uh, you know, like quotations and so on, which we're gonna talk about it uh, on a following slide. Uh, that being said, it's a little bit like programming in C, where you have to take care manually about, you know, like memory allocation and so on. So you do have to explicitly subscribe. And when you explicitly subscribe, uh, you can really fine tune. And, and the same uh, uh, metaphor like with C, if you want performance with C, you can you can get you know like the most out of it because you, you do your memory allocation, you don't have garbage collection or or whatever. There's no magic, you know, if you would call garbage collection uh, magic. But you can oversubscribe, you can undersubscribe, which is a, a, a little bit tricky when you're debugging certain performance problems. I, w I, w I would summarize it like this. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Oh, it's uh, so good to have uh, someone who agrees. <laughs> so, yeah, moving to the next slide is mutability. Um, yeah, because set state is obviously mutable. So, you have your object, and if you want to change something, you're kind of calling, like, we don't know. We don't know how it's working under the hood, but the idea is that you mutate your state and you cannot get the previous, previous, previous state of your component. So you can theoretically in the hooks, you can get like the previous state and the next state, but like 
time tracking, no, oh, time tracking, gospel, uh, time traveling, yeah. <laughs> like with the, how it was one of the selling point of Redux is not possible because you don't have like your whole history of the changes. And I think the same story is about Mobix. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was about to say. So, so yeah, Mobix works uh, pretty similarly to, to set state in the sense that, as I said, it's just data structures that you can mutate, and whenever they mutate, uh, they can react. And usually this reaction, when you integrate it with uh, React, is that it renders a component, uh, although you can also use it to compute uh, a new kind of uh, der derived uh, state. So basically, um, you know, like that's, that's something I, I'm talking about it now, because I, I, maybe I don't have another chance to talk about it. <laughs> but um, one, one thing that, uh, that uh, the author of Mobix realized is that uh, it's not only uh, views reacting to state, but sometimes it's also state reacting to state. So the classic is when you have a list of, uh, I don't know, let's say users, and you want to say the, the number of users. So that number, it's actually the length of the array. You could also say the average age of these users. You could uh, do any kind of, co kind of computations. And he realized that many times, uh, and he put an example of uh, putting a picture on Twitter and it only shows uh, in one place and it doesn't show in the other. So many times we duplicate state. And when you duplicate state, uh, you have the problem of uh, not being in sync. So he said, like, they, uh, data should be as pure as possible, kind of like you would do in, in SQL, like the normalized, and anything else should be derived. So uh, what it does is that when you mutate this, uh, this data, you can actually uh, listen to this mutation and recalculate certain, uh, certain properties. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I was talking about computed and maybe no, I'm just thinking the that theoretically <laughs> even set state as like all the authors of uh, React is really like asking you not to, to store any derived data in the state itself. So yeah. like if you have any data that you can calculate, please calculate it inside the render, inside anywhere. And if you want like to performance optimize, you should component update or like components will receive props or any other stuff. But yeah, not please do not store any derived data in the state. And I think, like, so all three of our contestants uh, are, yeah. like, using the same idea here. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, going back to the main topic, yeah, uh, Mobix is it's mutable, meaning that every time you update something, it's updated. There is no trace of the previous values. Uh, so in, the, in this sense, it's completely mutable. While in Redux... Yeah, obviously, everything is kind of, kind of immutable. Uh, because... Because of the idea. Uh, so the idea of Redux is that every time you're like passing, you're calling an action creator that which uh, emits action, and then reducers are listened to these actions. Every reducer, uh, like I know that maybe you don't know, like if you don't know the concept of Redux, sometimes it's like, oh my God, action creators, reducers. Um, so reducers are returning the new state based on the previous state and this action. Sometimes they ignore if they don't interested in this action, or but sometimes they like do something, but return in a new state. So like the main problem and the main debugging problem that sometimes like you're thinking that, oh my gosh, my, Re my React is not updating or something is not working with Redux, is that you're um, trying to see your reducers and you're seeing like when you're like really mutating state and not returning a new object. And for connect helper that I was talking before, it's like totally, uh, killing idea and it's expecting you to return new state every time because of the nature of Redux. Sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not, as always with immutability. Uh, the cool thing of immutability is that you can do the whole story of what happened with your data. You can do time travel, debugging, time travel, like whatever you want. Uh, call it like all the debugger tools for Redux were really like using this as a, same, as a selling point for them. Uh, and sometimes it's even cool when you can uh, use it on production because if user like sees some strange state uh, inside the UI, you can just ask like somehow <laughs> the user to send this state to yourself, and then you can like totally replicate this state and on your like local machine. Uh, and I know, for example, that Sentry is using this uh, approach, and they integrated like their own bug tracking, like fail tracking tools with the Redux, so you can have like the whole state of the user, like with your um, error message there. Yeah, I, I would add uh, the whole iteration and iteration. Uh, you know, like you have the state somewhere else, let's say on an API or in local storage or whatever. You know, like. Uh, having the state somewhere else and saying, okay, that's now the state, uh, it makes it very easy with, with Redux. Because in the end, what you have, it's a big tree, it's a mutable tree, 
and it's something that you can serialize, you can store, you can you can you can bring back. So it's very useful, uh, and that's one of the things that I think, for me, it's uh, one of the best uh, best selling points of Redux. One example of this is the I think last week they recently uh, released uh, Redux Offline, which is uh, an extension to Redux that allows you to actually work offline with your application. And there's also very interesting uh, other project. I think we're going to talk about the, the other one when we talk about logging. Yeah. But uh, I think the, the whole concept of that your state, you can take your state, pack it, uh, put it somewhere else, uh, unpacking it, bringing it up, and then it's there. Because you're separating clearly what it's state and presentation. That's very powerful. And that's, uh, in my opinion, the, the killer feature for, for Redux. So Redux is better than Mobux. <laughs> if, if you need time traveling. Name two applications that need time traveling. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, then we have a shape. Uh, Can I ask a question? Feel free. Yes. Yes, so the state is not synchronous, but it's not really uh, like so. Like the definition of the state is that you have three arguments. The first one is that you are setting the three arguments or two arguments? Like two arguments. You, you, you pass a function that takes the previous state. Yeah. No, there so is the, like you, 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 you can pass an yes. object or a function. Yeah. So there, there are two shapes of set state. And they're pushing more and more for the function one. That. Yes. Because otherwise, if you pass an object and you, let's say, uh, the classic toggle, it's a button that it's active or, or not active. And if you say uh, the state is the negation of the previous state, uh, that may not work if you click twice because the, the state is asynchronous. But if you use the function, the function, it, it will just run passing you the, the correct state. So they recommend using the, the function one. If you're just saying uh, the state is equals full, uh, you can use object. And, and, then and, and also you have a, a callback. So yeah, you the are, second parameter yeah, is a yeah. callback, yeah. So when it's the state already there, and you can be fully sure that it's I mean, set. What I thought is that Redux is like taking that concept, maybe, I don't know, I, mm. I haven't seen Redux, but this is the same concept, no? Yeah, yes, but separated completely from the component. So in the end, what you have, it's a big tree of a state. So let's say you have your users with these, with these, and then it's a shape of a tree. And what you have is that with users, will go after the tree and will try to see if there is something that has to be recreated. And then it will return a new tree. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of similar in the, se in the sense that it's a function that returns something else. Uh, like all the reducers are, are these, uh, but it's completely different in the sense that it's completely separated from the components. Yeah, yeah. moving shape. back to shape. Uh, yes, so the shape is just like the uh, where are you like storing your uh, data. And with state state, it's like totally star or asterisk here because yeah, you can save whatever you want, but normally people stay saving objects. Uh, and with Mobix, it's graph. Why? Yeah, so that, that, that was one of the things that was more challenging for me uh, with Redux. So, yeah, I'm, I'm spoiler here. Uh, Redux is a tree. We, we said it like a thousand times already. Uh, but it was sometimes for me difficult to imagine how to map my state into a tree because my, my state was not a tree, it was a graph. It, it was, I mean, a tree, it's, it's technically a graph, but it uh, it was a graph that it was interconnected. Sometimes it flowed. Like, you know, like we ha I had relations. Let's say a user has a task that belongs to a project, and a project has users and these, and, and all the objects are, are kind of related. And for me, it was really challenging uh, the fact that I, I, I was forced to use uh, a tree. As, as I said before, uh, Redux forces you uh, these kind of conventions, and because of that, you, you can do all the uh, all the you know uh, hydration, dehydration. You can really have uh, a separate thing. With uh, with Mobix, you, you can have a, any kind of shape. You just have your objects, and you can relate them how you want. You can have uh, computed properties from other ones. So um, you, you have much more freedom, which some people find challenging. Some people say, no, no, I want strict, uh, clear rules. I really want to know how to structure my store, uh, and that's not Mobix. Mobix doesn't tell you how to do it. So 
you can find a little bit lost there, but it gives you freedom. But by the way, Redux uh, also says nothing about the f like the general. So that well, it says you, you better not have more than one store. Yes. <laughs> no. Interesting. Uh, so we have a discussion finally. Uh, <laughs> uh, in reality, what Redux uh, tells you that hey, we have like a couple of best practices that like Dan Abramov and the team thinks about that they are like right because of the experience of building applications and the main best practice is like to keep your store normalized. So please do not do like really deep graphs when you have like everything inside everything or just like authors and then you have books and then you have like you no know, pages or something like this. Please do not do that and do like different tables and then maybe like one or two levels of nesting because it's going to be just easier. Easier from the developer perspective to update, to read, to connect, to do everything. Um, but this is just an advice. Theoretically, you can do whatever you want with your state and save there in like in what shape and what form yeah, you want to do that. And the same about like the tree idea. You, if you don't want to use tree, you can not to use tree. It's like that. What's compose reducers the function from Redux for uh, doing by by default? It's like creating a tree. Uh, but feel free not to use it if you like don't like it. Okay. <laughs> And with multiple stores, it's the same idea. Uh, like normally, like the again, the kind of the not the best practice, but the main use of Redux is when you have like one huge object, and people of like normally really like are scared about this idea. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like storing all the state in one object. What's going to be with garbage collector? My browser is going to die. All the users are going to complain. No, in reality, it's not the case, and I never saw the same people like saying that, oh my gosh, store is like 100 meg or to one gig and it's killing my browser. Um, so, but you can, you can like separate the store in two pieces, five pieces, 10 pieces, depends on you. It's like no one forces you like to have only one store and use it like for the whole application. If you like loading something asynchronously, like feel free to have two stores or like to merge the asynchronous store into like the main store that already have been loaded. Like totally flex full flexibility here. Although then you lose the ability to pack everything, bring it with you, and then pack it whenever you want. Which uh, I think it's one of the best. Uh, I mean, you can like pack. Uh, yeah, you can pack multiple one. stores. Yeah, but then you can do the same with more <laughs> Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, one of the things um, that I find annoying in React, and they are apparently improving it in uh, with Fiber, it's the uh, traceability. So when something fails or there's something that doesn't work, uh, sometimes it's not really easy to know what uh, caused it, you know? And many times the stack trace starts at React and you're like, yeah, but I, I did this update or I, I did something and I only see the React stack and I don't see the origin of uh, what did I do for this to happen. So with set state, this, this is the case, you know, like you don't really uh, have a very traceable um, way of knowing why things updated, so there's there's absolutely no logging as far as I know. I don't know if you if you're aware, but um, and, and and we say this this uh, this uh, logging because uh, Mobix and, and and Redux do do actually log things and they do it in a very different way. So we, we thought it was interesting. For set state, it's like when React just started, everyone was like writing mix scenes because it was like really, yes. <laughs> really a thing that that time. Uh, like just to hook into component will update or like a component will receive props and just like see okay what state have been uh, like what other uh, was the changes what were the changes for the state and what are the changes for the props and then just like to log into the console or do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, that's the maximum that you can get out of the set state logging. Yeah, so in Mobex you you have logs, so basically you can wrap any any observable uh, modification into an action. So basically you can say, let's say we we change the user setting from admin to not admin, and you can say this is an action that it's uh, disable admin. You know, like very similar to how it works in in Redux, where you have your action creators that create these these strings that are actions. So Mobex does does the same. There's actually uh, a strict mode in Mobex that allows you to only be able to mutate state if you wrap it into an action. So it makes uh, it forces you to make it explicit. And then whenever this mutation happens, uh, as a side effect, uh, it will lock this information. So uh, important thing here, it's a, it's a side effect. So it's something that if you have the dev tools, you can see, you can, you can have very similar, not as good as Redux. I have to say like Redux dev tools are, are the best out there. 
but you, ha you can have similar kind of log, and you can see, oh, this happened, and this, and this, and because of this, this reacted, and because of this, this was computed, and so on. So you can see actually all the cascading uh, effects, and you can see why your application is in the state that it is. But uh, very important, it's a side effect. It's not something that it's uh, baked into, into the framework. Uh, Redux, uh, it's exactly the, the opposite. Yeah, because I think it was one of the salient points when Dan Abramov came with, with the idea of Redux that he wanted like to do time travel debugging. When you have like a slider or you have like actions and then you can click through them and the application is just like moving back and moving forward and which is more interesting back in time uh, on the uh, like all the user actions. So you can like start with like empty inputs or some like view of your application and then move forward and again back to the all stages that uh, the application went through. And it's awesome because developer tools, uh, it's like the whole ecosystem of developers tools really blossomed after that. And uh, like open source community created like, I don't know how many, like visualizers to all these developer, developer state. So you could have like time travel, like time machine in a Mac, uh, or you can have like a graph, or, like build it. <laughs> Uh, build it all like D3 visualizations, like seeing like how your state updated with like all the um, really, really cool animations. And it was awesome. And I'm not sh like, but being really frank, I'm not saying that's like it's ultra useful every day. Uh, like, but sometimes it's really cool that you have this opportunity and you're like seeing some really strange bug, you're activating it and you're seeing like everything that happens uh, to the store. And sometimes it's really awesome if you have this in production because users are complaining that yeah, something happened to your application. You're going there, you're like either asking if it's not users or QA, like to copy the whole state and get it back or just like to debug what's happened to the tree, like the state tree uh, by itself. And I think it has uh, interesting properties. Again, as I said, Redux enables truly functional programming, you know, like while uh, React out of the box or MobX, I think they're more oriented onto uh, object-oriented uh, approach. So again, this lock works a little bit the reverse of what we used to. So I always, uh, when, when talking to Lia about this, I, I made a conversion with, uh, with the database. When you do a change in the, on the database, you mutate it, and then there's a lock as a side effect, like MobX, that, uh, that gets, uh, gets there. Interestingly, a lot of databases use this lock to actually replicate. So for instance, MySQL, they use this lock to replicate, and it's a way that they can also mutate the state. So uh, Redux works exactly this way. You talk to, the, to Redux through a lock, so you're, you're basically appending these, these elements to this lock, and then uh, through the reducers, it mutates the state. One very interesting approach uh, recently, I, I don't know who is called uh, this, this project. Logux? Eh? Logux or what? Logux, yeah. Oh. So one interesting approach, for instance, it's uh, someone was thinking, well, the way we do real time right now, it's kind of broken. Uh, we're all the time synchronizing state from the backend to the, to the client, and it's always very difficult. If we have this uh, concept of immutable lock, you know, why don't we apply it to state synchronization between the backend and the frontend? So basically what they did, it was very, very cool. And uh, they used this immutable lock as, the, as MySQL would use it for replication. And you could, as a server, you could just append things to the lock. Then the state would change on the application. And whenever you change something on the client, it will append on the lock and it will change on the, on the backend. So this, this idea is quite powerful because it gives kind of a, a, an immutable uh, place where all the things uh, are happening and then it allows both ends to synchronize the state in a reliable way. While in a mutable um, landscape, you wouldn't be able to do this reliably. So I, I think that's, that's really, really powerful. It's not, as, as Ilya said, on, on your daily life, you may not use it that much, but it enables some things that maybe still have to come that are powerful, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think that we, yeah, we really missed one slide here about like the whole ecosystem in general, uh, because uh, the idea of Redux is like so basically good uh, and like so <laughs> that's in the right way, biased uh, kind of yeah. <laughs> uh, but so you can see like a lot of uh, open source application or like applications or like libraries using it under the hood. So for example, if we are talking about GraphQL, it's like new hot topic, uh, like. 
it was before only relay. Now we see that relay is not so the number one anymore. It's like a polygraph QL. It's like the number one that everyone is using. Under the hood, it's using Redux. Because why not? It's like it's already awesome. What we can we can just even enhance the experience and just use Redux uh, as a main stage uh, state tool uh, for for the state. And the same story with Logax or a lot of other plugins that just like using Redux state and then allowing you to use like all, all the cool things around. Even middlewares or plugins like Redux offline that just like allows you to save your state locally and totally forget about like problems with the um, detecting if user went offline, should we sync with the, with, the bag, with the server, should we like show something, should we not show something, it works out of the box, totally transparent for you, and you're not even thinking about that. Okay. Yes, Hot an topic. extra slide. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking it's really important to see do we have Dan Abramov for every of these <laughs> solutions. So for set state it's partially because he's like on the um, on the core team of Re React. For Mobix, no, and for Redux, obviously, it's true. I think that's... Yeah, so this disclaimer, he's Russian, Dan Abramov's crash, and he has a crash on Dan Abramov. But uh, that being said, that slide, it's partially wrong. Dan Abramov said himself, you don't need Redux for all, uh, all your projects. Now he works on React Core team, and he pushes quite on the set on state. The set state. That's why it's partially there. <laughs> and also, he mentioned many times how awesome Mobix is out of the box, so... <laughs> but yeah, Dan Abramov, is, uh, it's cool. And we don't have slides oh, anymore. Okay. Oh. So and then we can leave it with uh, with Dan, no? Dan, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I, so maybe we can wrap up a little bit. Uh, yeah, we can do like answer questions. We can do then small round of discussion. Well, I, I would I, I would like to wrap up. Feel, a feel bit. free. Uh, so uh, we wanted to first uh, before diving into the different solutions. You know, we wanted to talk about set state. Uh, we found, and that's an opinion that Dan uh, also shares, uh, that many people rely too early and too much into into the external uh, kind of store. Um, I don't think you have to choose between one of the three. I would say you probably have to use set state plus something else, uh, unless you you really want to replace set state with with, with Mobex. But uh, I think it's very important to understand first how set state works and you know, like how React works before you dive into one of these two. I think uh, both Mobix and Redux, uh, they have different learning curves, but they are both, uh, I would say, quite difficult to master. So although, you know, with Mobix you can get um, some results quite early, and that's one of the selling points that the time to resolve it's quite, quite early. Uh, to master it, it's, it's quite difficult, the same as, uh, as Redux. So whenever you want to do it, you have to remember that whenever you have something global that many people will access in any uh, programming environment, that's always a challenge. So uh, having a global store that many people will access and you have to kind of subscribe and subscribe and so on, whatever you use, that's gonna be challenging. Okay, so that being said, I think it's time for the questions. Yeah, I'm just like thinking about action items. If you don't know React, please try with set state. Don't try Redux Mobix at all, because it's like the main question that, hey, I'm learning React, what should I use? Set state. Just that, because no, no need. Uh, it's already like learning curve could be high, and set state will give you like a lot of um, can bring you far, far away, even like without re Redux, Mobix, or any other new high tech there. Uh, and if you decide to like to learn Redux in the right way, I really suggest you to go to Egghead uh, and to listen to both of them uh, courses there on how to structure. No, it's not not joke, not because I have a crush on him. Um, <laughs> Because they are awesome, really, and they, if at some moment of time we learned how to use Redux properly before, it could save us a lot of lot of time, like debugging and lender structure in the store, uh, because the courses are really awesome, and I really advise you to listen to both of them. Then, then. Okay. Any questions? Don't be shy. Well, my question was... Uh, you already had the mic <laughs> <laughs> from before. <laughs> My question is, who, who is that guy? Because I don't know him. Yeah. I think that's the problem. You don't use Redux. That's why you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Dan, it's, uh, basically, it's, it's the creator of, of, of Redux. So this is why you know, he said that. Uh, but, uh, you cannot see here, because I don't know how to make this happen. But he's the creator of Redux. Now he works on the, on the core team of Facebook. And basically, it's a guy that 
did a lot of um, a lot of communication. You know, like he was very good communicating. He was very good teaching people. He had a lot of articles. He had a lot of um, kind of opinions. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So apart from uh, being a good de developer, he was a great communicator, which is uh, not always that common to find both. Yeah. Pasa, pasa. Um, okay. Uh, oh. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. You, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you, ha you have the mic. Okay. Um, uh, I, I've got no experience with Mobix, but I'm using uh, Redux in a big application, and I'm finding it um, that sometimes if you use if you use the connect helper on each of your components, you get a real uh, really coupled components with your state, right? Sometimes it's too deeply, it might be too deeply coupled. Um, like if you want to change a bit of your state, you have to rewire or change a lot of components. So you can lift that um, connect component to uh, to one higher up in the state. Um, don't you have the same pro pro uh, problem with Mobex because everything will be more coupled to the components? Um, well, I mean. In this case, coupling is good. Like you want to be explicit. So in the sense, if you have a component that it's you know it relies on a on a store, and and and, and that's the main difference. I mean that, that's a big one, is that in Mobix you have many stores, so you don't have one. Uh, if you have made clear, you can also have many in in Redux, but that's not usually the case. So let's say you have five component, uh, five stores, and you have um, the example we put before. No, we put the the one that. Only uh, only needs the user name, so this one will be coupled to the to the user. Whenever you change something, the only thing you have to really update is if if it has to listen to a new store, you will import that new store, so that that's going to be explicit. But you're not gonna ever have to change the stores unless you really need uh, to change something on the stores. So uh, and and that I have to say I find in Redux a little bit complex sometimes that I want to make changes in components I. Uh, I end up doing changes on the reducers, and now he's gonna. Uh, I'm going to have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, but yeah, I, I I find the separation mm, more clear. Yeah. But if you have like your complex internal structure, like imagine like pages, users, like names, yeah. and then you have an array there, and you decided like okay, I'm going to move users out of pages like somewhere. But that, that's not yeah. the. It's it's a graph. Yeah. So that that's the difference. It's a graph. You have users, a store. Pages, store, this, store. It's completely separated. If I want to know how many pages this user have, that's a computed Compound thing. Okay. So you, you, you basically compute the relationships. So uh, it, it, you, you don't really nest your data. You don't, you don't give it a shape. Your data is on their own stores, and you can compute the, the combination of them. But that's just a, a side effect. It's not. Uh, you don't have. You don't have to think beforehand. How is my data gonna look? I'm just gonna have. I, for me, I compare it a lot to to SQL. So you have your databases, you have your tables, and then you you query. You you can do your joins. You can do whatever. But your data is fully normalized. So this, this is why I think the the graph uh, idea is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I think indeed that normalizing your data helps a lot. Yeah. If you did that wrong, <laughs> that's why I'm saying like listen to the end before you start. Yeah. To <laughs> 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 if, you like, yeah. if you're a no-fizz, you start out with this big Redux store and, and you forget to normalize stuff, for example, and then only later you find out that that's that's a bad pra good practice. And you do that. What helped for us, and it was like to introduce an API for the store. So imagine you have like your selectors, because selectors normally people I think like reselect or something like more complex, but this is just a functions that return you like parts of the store. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it's like your public API of the store, so you have like only selectors, uh, like functions that they get in state, yeah, that and then sometimes they return in you like data there, and you don't really know what's the internals like form uh, of the store itself. Then you can really easily refactor your store without like changing the components because components are calling just inside map state props. They just call in functions, and okay, functions are returning like a black box there. You. <laughs> can I ask two questions? Okay. One is the, you talk a lot about actions, like user actions, but there is a time. So what's which in condition of time? Let's say I have something expires by midnight. 
-hmm. how each of them handles or what's the way. Yeah, I, I can talk about Mobex. So as, as I said, Mo Mobex, I talk about how Mobex interacts with React, but Mobex itself can work in any, like a standalone. The only thing it has, as I said, it's just observable data and some function that it can run, you know, like a callback when the data modifies. Uh, so basically you could have a set interval, you can have anything, and whenever this happens, it just mutates the data, and whoever is listening to that will change automatically. There's a good example in the Mobex documents uh, about like, uh, like implementing a clock in, in Mobex, and it basically does the ticks and it, it moves around. And totally the same story for Redux, because action creators is just like a functions that generates actions, and they could be called on user action, but they could be called on anything else. So again, set interval or something like what do you want? It's going to call these functions, and then they're going to generate an action, and store going to be updated. And the second question: If I do Redux, these are RxJS, would I supersede Mobex? <laughs> I, I never use uh, RxJS, so I, I, I can tell a little bit. Yeah, uh, it depends on how we are going to use RxJS because if you're going to use Redux observables, it's like the bindings between RxJS and Redux. Um, but that's going to replace you like action creators more, and it's going to be like another layer on top of your asynchronous actions. But I'm. But I think yeah, you, you can just do the same idea of observables in RxJS and it's going to be the idea of Mobix because it's just observables. But on performance level? Just, don't just, know, just, we just need to measure. Just use Mobix. I mean, it's easy. Why plug two things if you can have it in one, you know? No. <laughs> if we're going, talking about like Redux and optimizations, I don't know, it depends on you again, your Redux tree. And from the React perspective and Mobix, I think it's going to be kind of the same. More questions? Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I think you've been missing one slide, which is unit testing. Can you discuss about it a bit? Yeah, we've we've missing a lot of a lot of slides actually. But this one, you know, I think, is crucial in this. Especially point. me that I haven't done any. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, uh, and I will, I will talk on behalf of uh, of Ilya. So you, you really appreciate that it's not a debate; it's you know a collaborative uh, talk. Uh, as I said, obviously anything that doesn't have side effects, it's more testable because it's very easy to test input output. You say this goes in and this goes out, and that's it. You know, like unit tests, it's very easy when your components are pure. It's very easy when your reducers are pure, and so on. So. Yeah, I think Redux it's much better for unit tests. But from my perspective, the main pain point in testing Redux is only action creators because it's theoretically the only place you can have asynchronous asynchronous uh, Also, the mutation of reducers. Like but reducers are synchronous, and you can just like it's like a function. You're passing yeah, state initial, you pass in some action there, and you're expecting the output. So it's kind of that's like clear. That's was more the question about Mobex because of the magic under the hood. About what? Uh, the question about unit testing more related to Mobex. Ah, how to, Mobex, to test yeah. it. Yeah. I have to say though, in Mobex, you don't really test uh, the reaction itself because that's like testing something that's already tested by, by Mobex library. So you, you test the stores, uh, you know, like if I do this, this, this happens, you know, like this mutation happens. Let's say, let's say imagine you say, uh, I, I want to increase the counter, you know. So you test if I call this function, then the counter is two, you know. So obviously, what you're testing is a, it's a mutation. It's not, you know, like this object. Then it returns this other one that it's mutable. So it's uh, it's not it's not that it's bad. It's just that I think uh, testing immutable things it's it's easier. So so in Mobix and tests, you just like do an after run, and then you're checking things. Or how it's yeah, you, so you, you're, you, you can test the same as you would test, you know, like a mutation on any object. You know, like if I, if I append something here, what, I, what do I expect the, the result to be? If I, if I increment this, what I expect the, the end result to be? So um, it's, you know, like it's, it's normal testing as you would do. The only thing is I think it's what it's cool about Redux is that you can you can treat your your tree as a snapshot and you can easily see you know like the different kind of states that it would leave depending on the states so right, on the actions so sorry thanks hi uh, do you have any 
tools or ways that you can mm, test or see if it's something that you do or a state structure that you use is performance, is a better performance than another one or do you use something to, to test, to, to calculate that or to? I think in terms of performance, Ilya is the, is the one who had to deal with all the crap, so. <laughs> no, the main thing that you need to start, you just need to go to React DevTools and activate the, um, there is a tick, like, please visualize me all the updated components. Because it's going to be your first, first step. If you're seeing that your UI is slow, please do that. And then you're going to see what components are rendering more than they should. And, hmm? and then the question starts, why? <laughs> and that's the interesting thing here. Because in terms of Redux, uh, the main thing, as I said, is like the understanding that every time something happens to the store, like map state to props is called. And then depends on how you structure your components, how you write them, there could be like the components could render or not. And this again depends on your selectors, so it's hard to say there is like rule of thumb or something like that. Uh, so after you found your components that are slow and a lot of and rendering a lot, go to map state to props and just put a console log. And then you're going to see, it's going to be your first step uh, to, to debug this. Another question, when, when is it there is a rule? I know it's not a rule, but sometimes you have like the patterns. Uh, where when do you put state in a component, and where do you not put state in a component? For me, it's a really kind of easy rule of thumb. If I want to share the state, I'm like putting it in the store. If and again depends on share like between two components or between five, five, ten components. If I'm not sharing it, it's okay to be a state there locally. Yeah, I have the cousin, the cousin rule, which is, I, I will apply to programming, not to real life, but, uh, <laughs> no, sorry. So basically, um, I would say always use set state. Whenever you feel this, uh, not a sibling, but someone who is a little bit farther away, you know, like a cousin, you know, like a component that it's maybe connected, but a little bit far, then maybe I would think uh, about uh, extracting it. But I always, I always start uh, trying to use set state as much as I can, and then whenever I say like, no, that's that's too painful, then then I, I move it away. Uh, I think that's a rule that works for me. Thank you. Hombre, Ferran. <laughs> he doesn't need microphone. He has a powerful voice. And a beautiful about one. About the learning curve, about both technologies. Uh, I have been using Redux and Mobix, and in my opinion, Mobix uh, has a lower learning curve because it's, with all the observable thing, is dealing with all your reducers and selectors and all this thing that you have in, in Redux. Uh, it depends on the. I, I don't know if in Redux you can apply something else to to reduce this curve because in, instead of fighting in actions and reducers and go to your application and. I think there's actually an open conversation in in the Redux uh, repository, mm -hmm. and they're actually talking about like, okay, people is complaining about the boilerplate. What do we do about it? So I think they're actively right now kind of discussing what does this boilerplate mean, the, the knowledge, uh, kind of like the, the cognitive uh, cost that it has when you get introduced to Redux with all these concepts and so on. So it's something that they are talking about. I, I would say, in my opinion, as I, I, as I mentioned, I wouldn't say one is easier than the other. I think they have different lear learning curves. I think both are really hard to master. Uh, so I, I would compare them with an instrument. So like I would say Mobex is more like a guitar that you can take, you can do some, some chords very easily, and you can sing a song, and it, it looks great. And then you know, if you want to be you know, like Jimi Hendrix, it's, it's quite difficult. Um, I would say maybe like Redux is more like playing the saxophone. You try the first week, the first month, and it still doesn't, you, you cannot get a note out of it. But you know, it takes more or less the same amount of time maybe to be John Coltrane. You know? So I, I would say, you know, like they have different, yeah, oh, you, you like this uh, <laughs> metaphor, yeah. 
Hmm, that makes me happy. So I, I would say they are both complex. They have different lear learning curves, but I wouldn't say uh, one is easier than other. But they are both complex. They are complex problems to solve. Um, they are not easy. I think that here is also like a thing of a context because if we are like thinking about learning curve, we are obviously thinking about like okay, what's baggage we have already of learning, and I think people are normally coming from like OOP or like things that we can mutate, and in my opinion, it will be totally different if everyone for everyone's first language was Haskell. Yeah, uh, we, so we, then it will be like, oh my gosh, Redux is like a homeland. It's, what are you doing here with Mobix? <laughs> and yeah, because the problem with Redux, Redux by itself is like 100 lines in code. It's ultra simple. And the idea of like the, the code that you may have there. But the concepts, the concepts, yeah, you need to grasp them. You need to understand what reducers are and what like are they doing in general, what action creators are doing and why they are even there, and what action is. Like, if you're trying to distill every one of these concepts, they are super, again, simple and easy, because, like, reducer is just a function, action creator is another function, and action is an object. So, but, like, obviously, we are all humans, and we're trying to apply our previous knowledge, and it just doesn't match. And that's why you have, least all cognitive problems and dissonance, and then you're thinking, like, to stop being a developer, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you look at Dan, and you say, hmm, he was right all the time. <laughs> Any other question? One second question. Oh, you're cheating. Uh, how did you feel when you discovered how Mobex subscription thing works? Because the day that I it's discovered really beautiful, how yeah. Mobex works was like, oh my god. And <laughs> this is one thing to be done in compiler time, but he's doing it in run time. And for me, it was really hard, but I ignored it for a while and was good, you know? Yeah. I, I think it's, it's very good out of the box, so the performance it gives, you know, the subscriptions, they map, I would say, almost one-to-one -to, -one to what you expect to map, but it's true that you have to know it. So there's a common problem with Mobix is that you realize that you're not unboxing a value, so you're not actually observing it, you're just passing it, and then you expect that parent component to be rendered, but it's not, and uh, like we had one, one issue, and we were like expecting, and it was actually rendering as it, sh as it should have to, but it, we, we didn't really grasp it, because you, you have to understand when it hooks to that value. So I think it's, uh, it's magicality, it's, it's great when it works, when it doesn't, you have to remember how it works, and implicitness, it's always a bit tricky. So. I think it's a, it's a great idea for out of the box experience, uh, and so far I haven't had problems, but as I said, to master it, you really have to understand exactly when it will hook or not. One example, and I think you, you made it, is if you have, uh, if your rendering, it's not, uh, it's not deterministic, like let's say, imagine you have an if else, and the if has a math random uh, bigger than 0 0.5, then you really don't know what it's gonna hook into because it's gonna go into one branch or the other, and then you know you hold uh, you hold deterministicness, uh, it's gone. I think Ferran had one. Yeah, my question was I forgot. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there any is there the concept of uh, subscribing to some event, or it doesn't have any any sense here, like? A user was created, so maybe some components want to do something. Yeah, yeah. So that I mean, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, Redux, there is no such a thing as events. Uh, like everything is action. Yeah, well, on on that, on, but on that way, on the kind of subscription, it's basically you know you pass the state and then yeah, everything you, yeah. everything like subscribes to the state. So yeah. like every time you subscribe to something and you're seeing this, okay, I'm interested, like. In, this part of the state, every time state changes, you are getting notified uh, to this callback. So just like a pretty classical callbacks in JavaScript. And in the terms of Mobex, it basically if there's an array of objects and you subscribe to that array, when, whenever a user is added, then you will be notified. But there's no, you cannot tag these, uh, these events with a name. Right. So, oh, people are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Bad question. <laughs> So, so it, because I, I was worrying about the, the 
performance that you listen to the whole state, but it's not that, that way. No? You listen to only a part. For Redux, you're listening to the whole state. Ah, yeah. So every time the state is updated, all the all the listeners are notified. Yeah, no, not in the uh, Mobex only listens to those uh, attributes or or in the case of array, if there are new elements or something is deleted, it hooks into this into these events. Yeah. So it, I mean, it, you can do something to optimize it. Red, uh, Redux is doing nothing, but React Redux, it's like the, another package that connects Redux to React, it's doing a lot of stuff to optimize it under the hood. So when you call connect, it's the thing that connects React components to the store, it's already up, like returning your high order component. Uh, you don't see this, but it just because works. And that checks all the things like to optimize stuff. Because you basically can say like, I had this, now I have this, it's the same, then pass. You know, so that's as easy as this. Uh, Mobex, you can subscribe to anything within anything, right? Yeah. So how do you limit yourself to don't start observing everything and end up being as a Redux? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to limit yourself. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Mo Mobex sells itself <laughs> Mobex sells itself as a spreadsheet. So let's say you have a spreadsheet with numbers and you can have a graph. When you change a number, the graph changes. But you can also calculate some numbers that can also populate. So you can actually... Everything can be computed from everything. I don't think that's that's bad. Deriving data, it's it's good. So um, I I don't know why you should limit yourself. But I can circumvent like uh, some storage spaces. I can start signing up to some other storage spaces without sending to props and so on. So I can sit here and listen to what people talk into the other room and then something else and something else. It's like, it's a human error, what I'm asking more, because... Uh, I'm, I'm not understanding the question, sorry. Yeah, the yeah. will protect from human errors. Yeah. No, si since, since everything is observable, and yes. I can observe anything yeah. within any component, Yes. how do you restrict yourself, don't be... Yeah, so the, the thing is that you actually on a, you're only going to react to the things that you actually need to render. So if you need to render... Uh, three things from different stores, you're gonna hook into this, but you don't need to subscribe to the others because you don't need to render. So the actually the actual rendering is what makes you subscribe to the stores you need. And then if you need to subscribe to 100 stores, that's a big hell of a component, but that's that's your fault, you know. And and you know, but it's it's alright because that component needs that 100 stores to to re render. Yeah. And and actually one of the things I forgot to mention is that. If you have circular dependencies, let's say this object uh, listens this one, this one, this one, this, this one, you know, like Mobex does the kind of flux uh, architecture, so it won't re render infinitely. So it will mark uh, the three of them, and once the three of them are updated, you will react into this. You also have transactions, you can say these eight mutations, I want them to react only once. I don't know if that answers your question. We can talk offline maybe later. <laughs> The Billy guy. I, I have a colleague that says that for general, the generalization for the, the choosing between the two libraries, he says that uh, for a small projects without thinking, he uses Mobex, and for bigger projects, he uses Redux. Mm -hmm. In which degree you, do you agree with this, with this generalization? Like, uh, from my perspective, like, depends, like, define big and small. Because we can say like small project with a huge team or like big project with a small team. I don't know. Yeah, because uh, what at least author of Mobix and other smart guys on Twitter, it's like my way of learning, um, uh, like tells that if you have like a lot of data and like a huge, like think spreadsheet, if you have like this amount of computed data, then obviously Mobix is the way to go. If you have more classical website, like in general, like any SaaS project, then Redaxes will be just easier to like not to shoot yourself in the foot. And from my perspective, I can see the same because if you have like a kind of big team, uh, Redux is good because it's kind of a framework. Everyone doing kind of the same. Like obviously, they all of um, everyone complains that oh, I'm gonna need to write this boilerplate, creating constants and all of stuff. But at least they are doing the same. And uh, you can open any component, any reducer, and see you know, like kind of the same structure with Mobix and like code that I saw with Mobix, sometimes it's totally random and people do whatever they want. And for bigger projects, I could find personally it's more problematic. Yeah, I, 
I don't think it's a matter of the bigness of the project. As I said, I think both of them are hard to master. So I think in terms of team, either you have them on board or you don't have them on board. I've seen people messing up with uh, with both frameworks. Uh, it's very easy to miss up things with uh, both Mobex and, and, and Redux. I think they, they both have a complexity that you cannot expect to throw uh, like some junior developers and figure out immediately and, and solve it. You know, like it's uh, like either your team is going to learn it or not. In terms of size, if uh, if you're talking about number of components or number of data, I still think it's more or less, you know, like they're both have the things or do not. I think it's more your, the matter of your priorities, you know, like it's whether uh, how you feel doing that project. I think they both feel very different. Um, so it, it, it depends whether you want to, you know, like maybe think more of immutable and, and, and functional way and you think more like about like uh, unit testing or like things like this. Um, or I think, and that's my opinion, or if you want to speed up things, and that's, uh, I felt this way, I think with Mobex you can execute fast, faster. But I don't think that has anything to do with being a side project or being a smaller project. Um, I, I, felt, I felt this way. So I, I think one is faster, the other maybe it's more robust and more kind of uh, very, I don't know how to say, like a testable or more like consistent kind of enterprise level. <laughs> more Java-like, Java they say here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Last, one? Uh, is last it, one. Last one. Oh. <laughs> is it hard? Is it good or bad to have a lot of transformations between states? The, the thing that you mentioned, that you have yeah. a state that is that component that calculates something from different parts of the state, mm -hmm. is this pretty normal? Is this, uh, yeah, so one, one thing that can happen, so let's say you, you do three mutations in a row, then obviously your component is gonna re-render three times, so you can wrap them in a, in a transaction. But that happens with, uh, with Redux as well, you know, like if you mutate n, n times, then you're gonna recalculate the stores, and then you, this is gonna be. So in the end, it's it's up to you to choose the granularity, and that's the problem with React. Sometimes it, it reacts so much that sometimes you see the intermediate steps, and you're like, no, no, stop it, stop it. You know, I just I just want you to throttle a, a little bit. You know, so um, I, I think I think Mobex uh, has the, the tools to to avoid this, and probably with as well. Obviously, obviously, yes. <laughs> All the tools are there. <laughs> Okay, I think, and I think that's that's it. No, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for sharing, and thank you for sharing all your